and welcome to Storytime in Nature. I'm Coral Bass with Manatee County Parks and Natural Resources in Conservatory Park. Today and this week we've been talking about magical and mysterious bats. Now bats are amazing creatures for many ways but one of the most important things is that they're the only winged mammals, right? So the only ones that can actually fly. True flight. Not like a gliding squirrel. They can actually take off from, say, the ground. So that's cool about them. And then we're going to talk a little bit about their similarities between bats and birds. So come along with me and explore all the similarities between these two amazing creatures. Today we'll be reading Stella Luna by Janelle Cannon. In a warm and sultry forest far, far away, there once lived a mother fruit bat and her new baby. Oh, how mother bat loved her soft, tiny baby. I'll name you Stella Luna, she crooned. Each night, mother bat would carry Stella Luna clutched to her breast as she flew out to search for food. You can see her right there. It's mother bat, and then you can see Stella Luna right there. One night, as Mother Bat followed the heavy scent of, a, of ripe fruit, an owl spied her. On silent wing, the powerful bird swooped down upon the bat. Dodging and shrieking, Mother Bat tried to escape. The owl struck again and again, knocking Stella Luna into the air. Her baby wings were as limp and useless as wet paper. Down, down she went, faster and faster, into the forest below. Here, can you see the bat? The two bats, and then you can see the owl. I think it's a great horn, if I were to guess. The dark, leafy tangle of branches caught Stella Luna as she fell. One twig was small enough for Stella Luna's feet. Wrapping her rings around her, she clutched the thin branch, trembling with cold and fear. Mother, Stella Luna squeaked, where are you? By daybreak, the baby bat could hold on no longer. Down, down again, she dropped. See her holding tight? Whomp! Stella Luna had landed head first in a soft downy nest startling the three baby birds who lived there. Stella Luna, Luna quickly clambered from the nest and hung out of sight below it. She listened to the babble of the three birds. What was that? cried Black. I don't know, but it's hanging by his feet, chirped Flitter. Shh, here comes Mama, hissed I Pip. Okay, now check it out. You can see all three of them. Yeah. Can't be good for any of them. They were all, probably all scared. Many, many times that day, Mama Bird flew away, always returning with food for her baby. Stella Luna was terribly hungry, but not for the crawly things Mama Bird brought. Finally, though, the little bat could bear it no longer. She climbed to the nest, closed her eyes, and opened her mouth. Plop! In dropped a big green black grasshopper. Ever been so hungry you'd eat bugs? I've tried bugs before. Some of them are actually quite good. Some people eat chocolate covered crickets. Stella learned to be like the birds. She stayed awake all day and slept at night. She ate bugs even though she they tasted awful. Her bat ways were quickly disappearing. Except for one thing. Stella Luna still liked to sleep, hanging by her feet. Once, when Mama was away, the curious baby birds decided to try it too. When Mama Bird came home, 
she saw eight tiny feet gripping the edge of the nest. Eek! She cried. Get back up here, this isn't sin. You're gonna fall and break your necks. You ever had mama tell you you're gonna fall and break your neck? The birds clambered back in the nest, but Mama Bird stopped to tell Luna, You are going to teaching my children to do bad things. I will not let you back into this nest unless you promise to obey all the rules of this house. Stella Luna promised. She ate bugs without making faces. She slept in the nest at night and she didn't hang by her feet. Stella Luna behaved as a good bird should. Look at Stella Luna's face. She doesn't look happy now, does she? Scared, maybe. All the babies grew quickly. Soon the nest became crowded. Mama Bird told them it was time to learn to fly. One by one, Pip, Flitter, Flap, and Stella Luna jumped from the nest. Their wings worked! I'm just like them, thought Stella Luna. I can fly. See them all flying? Pip, Flitter, and Flap landed gracefully on a branch. Stella Ru Luna tried to do the same. <laughs> Look at her. Isn't that funny? See that shape? Look at the way she's hanging. Looks like she's reaching for the stars. How embarrassing. I will fly all day, Stella Luna told herself. Then no one will see how clumsy I am. Look at her. Those big wings. The next day, Pip, Glitter, Flap, and Stella Luna went flying far from home. They flew for hours, exercising their new wings. The sun is setting, warned Flitter. We had better go home or we'll get lost in the dark, said Flap. But Stella Luna had flown far ahead and was nowhere to be seen. The three ancient bir anxious birds went home without her. All alone, Stella Luna flew and flew until her wings ached and she dropped into a tree. I promise not to hang by my feet, Stella Luna said, so she hung by her thumbs and soon fell asleep. She didn't hear the soft sounds of wings coming near. Hey, a loud voice said, why are you hanging upside down? Stella Luna's eyes opened wide. She saw a most peculiar face. I'm not upside down. You are, Stella Luna said. Ah, but you're a bat. Bats hang by their feet. You're hanging by your thumb. So that makes you upside down. The creature said, I'm a bat. I'm hanging by my feet. That makes me right side up. Stella Luna was confused. Mama Bird told me I was upside down. She said I was wrong. Wrong for a bird, maybe, but not for a bat. Let me check out this guy's face. More bats gathered around to see the strange young bat who behaved like a bird. Stella and Luna told them their story. You eat the bugs? Started one. You slept at night, gasped another. 
How very strange, they all murmured. Wait, wait, let me look at this child. A bat pushed through the crowd. An owl attacked you, she asked. Sniffing Bella Luna first, she whispered, You are Stella Luna. You are my baby. You escaped the owl, cried Stella Luna. You survived? Yes, said Mother Bat as she wrapped her wings around Stella Luna. Come with me and I'll show you. Where to find the most delicious fruit. You'll never have to eat another bug as long as you live. That sound wonderful? Find the food you really like? Look at the joy on their faces. When you see your mama after. But it's nighttime, Stella Luna squeaked. We can't fly in the dark, or we'll crash into trees. We're bats, said Mother Bat. We can see in darkness. Come with us. Stella Luna was afraid, but she let go of the tree and dropped into the deep blue sky. Stella Luna could see. She felt as the rays of light shone from her eyes. She was able to see everything in her path. See right there? Absolutely everything. It's not just sight they have, they have something called echolocation. Soon the bat found a mango tree and Stella Luna ate as much of the fruit as she could hold. I'll never eat another bat bug as long as I live, cheered Stella Luna as she shuffled herself full. I must help pip, flitter, and flap. Nom nom nom. Imagine you're eating that mango. Oh, no. Can you make a good mango eating noises? The next day, Stella went to visit the birds. Come with me and meet my bat family, said Stella Luna. Okay, let's grow, agreed Pip. They hang by their feet and they fly at night and they eat the best food in the world. Stella Luna explained to the birds on the way. As the birds flew among the bats, Flap said, I feel upside down here. So the birds hug by their feet. Wait until dark, Stella Luna said excitingly. We will fly at night. We're going to fly at night. How exciting. Do you think the birds are going to be able to fly at night? As easily as Stella Luna? Remember what Mama Bird told them. When night came, Stella Luna flew away. Pip, Flitter, and Flap leaped from the tree to follow her. I can't see a thing, yelled Pip. Neither can I, howled Flitter. Ah! shrieked Flap. They're gonna crash, gasped Stella Luna. I must rescue them! Stella Luna swooped about, grabbing her friends in the air. She lifted them to a tree, and the birds grasped a branch. Stella Luna hung from the limb above them. We're safe, Stella Luna, said Stella Luna, then she sighed. I wish you could see in the dark, too. We wish you could land on your feet, Glitter replied. Pip and Flap nodded. They perched in silence for a long time. How can we be so different and feel so much alike, mused Glitter. And how can we feel so different and be so much alike, said Pip. I think this is quite a mystery, Flap chirped. I agree, said Stella Luna. But we're friends, and that's a fact. Stella Luna, did you notice that a bat and bird are very similar, but also very, very different? Let's start with their differences, all right? So birds, for the most part, not an owl, right? But lots of those songbirds and smaller birds are diurnal or daytime creatures, whereas a bat 
When could she see really good? It was at night, right? So she's nocturnal. So she's a nocturnal creature, Stella Luna. All right, so they're very similar that way. They both can fly, right? But their flight's different. When a bird flies and they're able to lift off easily from a branch, whereas a bat is gonna be hanging under that branch, right? So they're not gonna land on top. They're gonna land hooked underneath, all right? Because that's the way that a bat actually works. So we've got those. And so, and with that, that means they also sit under that tree, right? A little differently. Both can fly and both eat food, but they're different foods, right? In this case, Stella Luna was a fruit bat, all right? So she ate fruit. There are other bats out there. We've got, and in our area, a lot of them eat mosquitoes. We love them for that, right? We love them to eat our mosquitoes. So bats and birds are very, very similar, but they share a lot of differences and have their own little niche, their own little home, their own little place within that, the, the whole natural world. So, so can you think of any animal with a specific skill, kind of like that bat has that specific skill at night? If you do, let us know in the comments. So thank you so much for joining us again at Conservatory Park for our story time in nature. We hope to see you again next week on our next adventure. Goodbye.